Yeah, Connor here is playing our Tropagos team. Connor, one of our locals here in Windsor. He is running the Tropagos with that Terra Star Storm, Hyper Beam, Earth Power, Sleep Talk. We've got Amoongus, we've got the Chi Yu set, we've got Rillaboom, we've got Fluttermane, and we've got Tornadus Incarnate making an appearance once again here. Yeah, Tornadus Incarnate, a very strong choice. The Bleak Wind Storms, very, very strong, good Tailwind setter, but going up against the Ice Rider, you're going to be weak to ice. You're going to have to try and use that Terra Steel if you want to keep that preservation up. Yeah, and what I'm noticing about Patrick's team as well, he has Chi Yu, so it's got some decent coverage against, you know, opposing Calyrex Ices, but I don't think he's going to have too much to worry about on the side of, you know, uh, Connor's team. No Calyrex, like we mentioned. It's going to be a Terrapagos. So when it comes to heavy hitters against, you know, uh, against Connor's restricted Pokemon, you don't really have that many besides the Urshifu with the close combat. So we're going to be have to see how he's going to try to utilize some of his super effective moves here in this matchup. As we get started, we're going to see the Fluttermane and Chiyu, this is probably one of the scariest leads for any Pokemon that has low special defense because these Pokemon will absolutely shred through any Pokemon's defensive typings. Yeah, this is a very offensive line we're seeing here. And we're going up one of the fa the third time we're seeing this combo in the Smeargle Calyrex Ice. It's a very dominant combo today and we've seen it quite a few times. So we'll see how it plays out here. Connor. Oh, very... yeah. <laughs> Sorry, here we go. Go, go, go. I was going to say with no Gothitelle, the taunt shadow tag, this is going to be lethal. Yeah, Gothitelle was a big stopper to Smeargle earlier in the day, and now we're seeing it without it going up against, again, that Fluttermane has been a niche pick this weekend, but Fluttermane dominated the format for so long, so it's still an, a very scary Pokemon. I gotta say that earlier play with the uh, with the Smeargle getting taunted, just being stuck there, the Shadow <laughs> Tag. Again, this just shows all the different ways a Pokemon battle can really go. There's so many dimensions and layers, and the fact that it was still actually worse that it couldn't struggle is something that you have to consider too. The fact it was literally just an empty slot that couldn't be moved, but here to get things started off in this battle, we're gonna see Connor terrestrializing his, uh, or rather Patrick terrestrializing his uh, Calyrex with that fire. Typing. So that should help it a little bit when it comes to um, some of the other matchups going to be dealing with as well as resisting Chiyu's potential attack here. But Fluttermane using that Shadow Ball and Ooh. against the normal type, of course, is not really going to do too much, if anything at all. But Heat Wave with that Fire Terrestrialization is not going to be that scary to deal with. We get that Trick Room set and it looks to be the case that Patrick is in exactly the situation he wants to be in. I wonder if that was a guess of a Terrestrialization on the Smeargle because otherwise that was a very risky play. I would have gone for maybe the solid Dazzling Gleam that you usually see on a Floater main. Yeah, I mean... Man, the, the Smeargle is such an annoying Pokemon to deal with. You have to either worry about Fake Out, you have to worry about Spore, you have to worry about the Follow Me. I think it's totally safe to play that Follow Me, pull that Shadow Ball away, and just try and hit it. Dazzling Gleam, hard choice. I mean, Calyrex, what have we never seen in Calyrex Terra just turn one? The Ice Typing is more of a detriment than it is a benefit. So getting rid of its Ice Typing, but keeping the Stab, Icicle Spear, or Glacial Spear has been so important to it. Exactly. It's going to get protected out, but that Chi is going to take a hit. It's not super effective. It's still going to take it down to half. Yeah, yeah, that's, again, there's the deck rate. We are getting a plus two. It is going to start getting real dangerous out here as the Calyrex keeps munching up those desserts. This is where you have to start considering some of your options. If you are Connor, do you try to go for a pivot? Do you sacrifice the Pokemon that you have on the field right now? Can you afford to go without your Chiyu or your Fluttermane? I feel like Fluttermane might have kind of run its course in terms of uh, usefulness, but as I say that out loud, I realize that's probably not actually true because outside of Fluttermane, does he really have any instant heavy hitters? It's already spent the boost energy sure so it's not gonna have that guaranteed speed boost but it's still got a lot of life left in it guys, well, yeah? I think he's waiting to try and just clear the board as much as possible and have that last baton pass anchor there in tow that Terrapagos to try and sweep the rest of the team he needs to clear this Calyrex because there's no wide guard user on the side of Patrick oh that's true he wants to just try to whittle them down as much as possible potentially and yeah come in and try to sweep with the Terrapagos you almost want to keep Chiyu alive for Terrapagos as Terrapagos we've been seeing all this week has been just hitting under the damage numbers they would like. So we really need to see it hit hard. And Fluttermane is going to fall there. Really, that defense out of Fluttermane being like a 35 is not going to live a Glacial Lance in any circumstance, especially not a plus two. And now, now plus three. What you really want to do now is just try to stall out that Trick Room uh, because that's what really is going to be the main hindrance to your plan here if you are Connor. I'm pretty sure Ter uh, Terrapagos typically outspeeds the uh, Calyrex. Not many things are slower than that. So yeah. you want to just try to go as slow as possible and then you can really start putting the pressure. Not many things are slower 
than it. But one Pokemon that is slower than it is Amoongus here. Mm -hmm. So I would, wouldn't be shocked if we see a follow me from Smeargle this turn. I'm shocked he's going for the Dark Pulse. Going for the Protect on Amoongus, that is an interesting move. Maybe trying to bait out that follow me. He could be blocking the Spore, uh, but he, yeah, he's gonna go for the follow me, so he's just gonna protect with the Amoongus. Um, that's gonna protect it from the next Glacial once it's gonna come through, but I think he might be losing your Chiyu to this one. Uh, it's pretty low. Again, it resists the fire typing, but with those boosts, uh, it's probably gonna go down here, and then you're gonna be using your, uh, your Terrapagos without that extra special defense reduction. And now this Calyrex is at max power here with that last chilling Nay. And it's going to be a major uphill battle going forward. You're gonna to have to bank on maybe this spore hitting, maybe doing something with this Amoongus. I think that's why he wants to protect. He wants it there to be the supporter for this Terrapagos. Yeah, it would be a different story if Terrapagos had protect here. I think we are running low on Trick Room turns. I think this is either our last or our second last Trick Room turn. So Connor needs to find a way to bait it out. But right now I don't know if it can. I think yeah. Connor is banking on Terrapagos' ability here to tank that's one lance. But that's the thing that's so scary. It's max boosted. I don't know if it really can. Probably, it might not get one shot, but it would be in a very low range to the point where, of course, you have your Terrapagos ready to go. I think Trickle has got one turn left, but can you survive the next two Pokemon that are coming out full HP? I say plus four. Smeargle goes to sleep here. There you go. You remove the follow me potential here. But let's see what happens. Here's the Glacial Lance. Terra Shell will block it, making it not very effective. It'll be enough to tank it. Let's see. It is, no, not. It is not. Wow, and a big sweep from Patrick Chang, taking the first game and, and taking crit. the crit on the Amoongus to boot. The crit really feels unnecessary, but sure, why not at this point? Yeah. I mean, plus six, what's living a plus six Icicle Spear? Not many things, and not even a not very effective typing on, again, a respectably defensively uh, favored Pokemon. Terrapagos is no pushover when it comes to resist, especially with that Terra Shell, but again, plus six. <laughs> Six glacial lands. There's what, a what limit, are you to yeah. do, right? <laughs> it's not. It's not like it's uh, immune to damage. It just reduces it significantly. Yeah, it's not a mimic you with that nullification ability. A it natural. still has to take the hit. Yeah, oh, Tropicos is a is a, def is a really good defensive Pokemon on its own. I mean, some really high defense stats. But again, like there's not nothing high enough that can block that. Exactly, except for. Protect, you know, nothing can eat that hit, really. Except for, mm -hmm. Except for Mimikyu. So yes. maybe Mimikyu is going to be I've been play. saying, like, Mimikyu, Me I love that Pokemon. <laughs> Definitely one of my all-time favorites. You know, me and my ghost types, all right, we, we walk around with those. But Mimikyu, honestly, in VGC format, I think it definitely has a place. It takes a lot of exploration. I wouldn't be surprised if teams really... Over, especially over this break, try to maybe just take some time to experiment a lot more with this format, see what they can get away with, get away with working with. But if we do see Mimikyu... I would be kind of surprised, but I can't be. I can't say I would be totally surprised. I yeah. think it definitely has its place. I think the issue Mimikyu comes into is that disguise ability really, in a doubles format, leaves it so vulnerable. As much as disguise is a great ability, if you double target it, Mimikyu is going to go down instantly. Exactly. It's not the single threat that it normally that it can be. But the fortunate thing is, with this meta, with all these like main DPSs here, it's usually only one thing swinging at you. We rarely see these double swings unless it's like a Coridon team. And having your Mimikyu there to absorb two hits from your main DPS Pokemon. Well, it does have pretty threatening moves. I feel like if Thunder Wave becomes relevant again, we might see Mimikyu. Yeah, but we are seeing the change here for Connor. We are seeing Tornadus take the field with Chiyu. Now, Tornadus is a choice. Again, Tornadus weak to those Icicle Lands, so will we see a Terra early and take that Terra away from Terrapagos? Maybe the first one, Dark Pulse, onto the Calyrex, potentially. Maybe trying to go for that Heat Wave once again. You gotta try to assume at the very least, he has no reason not to Terrify her. I don't think he has a lot of important Terrors on his other Pokemon that he has to worry about, so might as well protect your Calyrex. Meanwhile, yeah. Connor needs that Terror there. With no Wide Guard on the team, that puts the value to Rapagos up to the max. He needs that for the late game. Yeah, here goes the Terra Ghost on the Chiyu, maybe trying to block that Fake Out. We'll see if he gets the call right here. If he gets his recorrect, that'll be a massive read. That Terra, terra going onto the Chiyu. Um, it would be huge, but actually, it's going to see that Smeargle get switched out entirely. Furograph is going to be the play. This Pokemon also blocks Fake Out. Thankfully, there are no Fake Outs on Connor's side of the field at the moment, but it's something you definitely have to consider when it comes to priority moves. Terra's going to come out most likely onto that Calyrex, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, no, well, we're going to see it first on the Chiyu. It's going to be the Ghost typing again to block that Fake Out that never ended up coming out. But at the very least, you know, 
It's got purple colors to it now. Who doesn't love purple? Yeah, it is a very defensive Terra. We are going to see the Terra fire here. I'm really not surprised. Really, Calyrex has Terra in... I don't think we we haven't seen a Terra in any battle today. I think it's Terra at every match. The first turn, it Terra's every single time. You don't want that Ice Weakness. And Psychic, also a vulnerable type with Incineroar and Chi Yu being in the mix. There's a Taunt. Block the is. Taunt because of Prankster. That is why you switch to the Frigraph. There's the Heat Wave. What a great read by Patrick. Trick Room goes up. Yeah, that Prankster, that Prankster blocked by Armatale. Absolutely insane. Yeah. The one benefit going into this match, though, is it did not get buffed by that Smeargle. It is not set up completely just yet. It's going to have to go through two lances before it gets those nays going. Yeah. We will see him, Connor, protect the Tornadus here, which really you have to do. You can't lose both Pokemon here. Making the double protect here, actually protecting both Pokemon, really going to stall out these turns of Trick Room, which is a great move. What makes this even harder to consider is the fact that it's not just this uh, this Calyrex that you have to worry about. There's still at least one other Pokemon that uh, Patrick hasn't revealed yet. It could even be the Ursaluna, which is also very capable of one-shotting most Pokemon. Yeah, if Ursaluna is in the back here, that's going to be a world of trouble. We're seeing that foul play hit into that protect. That is very scary for the Chiyu there as it now has opened itself up to a darkness weakness. Uh, it's a week to dark and now there's a lot on the table, so I might see a switch come in here. You don't want to get hit by that foul play. Gonna switch in the Trapagos potentially. I feel like you're kind of playing your hand a little bit too much there. It would be unexpected, but then you do also lose that element of control because you wouldn't have that Terra Shell anymore, most likely. So he's gonna opt to switch out the Chi, you bring up the Moon. It's a little bit more of a safer play. Uh, right now, seems to be a little bit more set up focused. Calyrex is gonna go for the Glacial Lance. You're gonna lose your Tornadus. Just... Oh, Tornadus goes down. Amoongus lives yeah. on 25, just barely holding on, preventing the double boost, but not a great position for Amoongus. It is slower, so maybe it can get a score off, but it's gonna fall to oh. foul play. Yeah, the Amoongus falls over and gets hurt by the Rocky Helmet, so maybe a little bit of damage there, but now I think Connor is playing around this pair, and he wants the Beads of Ruin with yeah, this Tarapagos. That's smart. That's yeah, the issue is he doesn't have that spread move on Tarapagos now that he's committed oh, to Tarapagosing, or to tearing the Chiyu instead of the Tarapagos, so we'll have to see if he can pull it out out of his back pocket. We see the Terra ship. Really weird that they gave it, that they gave it a tiny Pokemon version. Yeah, it's, it's a very interesting that uh, Terra onto the Chi Yu, because, yeah, without without your Terrapagos, you kind of lose out on a large part of your strategy. I guess you still reduce the special defense for your own Heat Wave on the Chi Yu, but then you are also losing the stab on it, too. So it's a double edged yeah, sword. Here's the Glacial Lance coming out, the Terra Shell blocking it. It should live this one attack. Yeah, it's up two chilling days, though. And wow, Chi, Chi Yu lives on one thanks to Focus Ash. But will it fall to Frigoraf here? It does. Yeah, it's definitely going to fall down. And that's the problem with Terra Ghost. It used to be such a good defensive type, but with Shadow Rider in the play now, and with the weaknesses of uh, both riders being psychic, exactly. you are there's so much dark coverage. Yeah, there's, yeah, so there's a lot coverage. of... And especially Foul Play has been so effective on Calyrex, using its, using its own attack set against it, when it gets so buff that that foul plays are just they're everywhere now we saw Gothitelle we saw seen all these Pokemon and there's the close combat going on to the semi-finals will be Patrick it's crit, <laughs> to crit end just once for, again just for that extra insult injury a little touch there at the end there yeah Patrick just demonstrating what a Pokemon battle when everything goes right for you looks like uh, really not a lot of uh not a lot of, for him to be worried about in those games. Felt like he was really under control for most of it and kind of just played his game plan, played it well. And uh, unfortunately, yeah, Connor just had a lot of issues to deal with in that set that he wasn't able to really recover fast enough to make something work. So yeah, Patrick taking this first game here 2-0. Yeah, congratulations to Connor on making it to top cut today. Mm -hmm. Sad to see him go out, and we lose to Rapagos, and we have one more Ice Rider make it to finals. It really is the battle of Ice Rider today. People have been seeing Maridon, so they went, well, how do I counter Maridon? I guess I just play Ice, I just play Go or Ice Rider even more. And that's really been the tech today. We've seen all of the Pokemon weak to, uh, weak to Maridon just fall drastically off the cliff and all these Pokemon that are strong against it rise right up to the top today. Mm -hmm. It's a nice little rock, paper, scissors we have going on in the meta currently, but I think 
I don't know. We don't know what's going on in that second bracket. Could be a duel of ice riders happening, but it could also not be the case. Like no. We know there's, I know there's still a Maraidon in one match, there's a Koraidon in another match, and I think our final Pokemon is, is the Ghost Horse himself, Shadow Ooh. Rider. So we'll have to see which Pokemon make it into the second round, or do we just have four hor Ice Horses in, the fi in our semifinals? <laughs> Yeah, well, we will see if the four horsemen will show up here in the next little while. But before we see that, we're going to throw it to a quick little break and we'll be right back with the next game.